Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. This is Adobe Live, and I am your host, Chris Blackstock. This is day two with Noah Aspen. Hi, Noah. How you doing? Hi, I'm doing good. <laughs> awesome. Awesome to hear. Very excited for today. Just want to welcome everybody to Adobe Live Pride Week. Uh, this week, we're celebrating the creativity for all from the LGBTQI plus community. So everybody's welcome. We're so excited to have you, Noah. This is going to be so much fun. Uh, today is also the artist spotlight. This is the time when we get to spotlight artists from our Behance community and the art community. If you guys look in the chat, you will see the artist spotlight tab. You can go in there, fill out the form, vote for somebody, vote for yourself, get one of your friends on here and we can spotlight them, hype them, get people to their page and see their awesome art. So we're gonna be doing that about an hour and a half into the segment. Also, thank you everybody on chat for coming all the time. Everyone is so awesome there, contributing all your questions. We've got Wade moderating for us today. So if you guys have any questions or anything, please just let us know, let Noah know. Um, we always love to answer those and get everybody to contribute to these live things because it's what makes it fun. It's what makes it live, right? This is what this is the best part. So uh, Noah, reintroduce yourself. Let us all know who you are again. Um, show us a little bit of your work. Let's go over day one and then we can talk about what we're going to do today at day two. All right, cool. Um, so hi, everyone. Um, my name is Noah. My pronouns are they, he. Um, I am a queer trans artist, and I am also Black and Indigenous and a person of color, and I'm really, really happy to be here today. Um, what's pulled up here is my Instagram, which is aspen.aspirations. This is where I post a lot of my work, a lot of my digital work. Um, Today, I wanted to like show you a few of my pieces that I've done um, for commissions. This was one of one of my friends uh, playing the guitar, which was really, really fun to do. Um, I also have done this for a um, lo-fi artwork um, that like is uh under the Instagram lo-fi study till I die. Um, and this was so fun to do. I just had so much fun doing all the little details in it and like um, getting to play around with the colors in the background. Um, and I had another, oh my gosh, yes. So I have like a meet the artist on there as well with things that I love. Um, I have my, uh, my astrology uh, information, which I know we were talking about yesterday in the chat. Um, yes. Chris, did you find out what your sign is? I, I think it's like Taurus. Uh, I want to say, mm, uh, nope, I got to figure it out. Oh, uh, yep. <laughs> I looked it up. I did look it up. I but believe I you. Forgot. I forgot it. <laughs> and then I also have like a few of my favorite pieces um, in this post as well. So definitely check it out. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy that we are here again today last time we did some prompts we uh let me see i was gonna say do you have that file it'd be awesome I to look do. at we did some prompts uh we went through about like 13 of them i think and uh and then we I chose three of them for y'all to vote on in my Instagram to see which one we would do today. And so I had you vote between sidewalk chalk. Um, we had the boyfriends over here. And then we also had the dinosaur lesbian tea party. Um, with, and they were fairies. They were fairy and, and, and the dinosaurs are miniature. Um, and that is the one that everyone chose. It's a good um, choice. It was a good choice. I agree. It has a lot going on here. Um, and I sketched it out for us last night. And we're going to turn it into a full piece today. Anything that doesn't get done today, I will be either posting on my Instagram or maybe uh, if there's like a good amount to do, I'll, I'll do a Twitch stream of it. But yeah, I'm awesome. I'm really excited to get started. Yeah, no, we're we're excited for you. 
Yeah. <laughs> we we want to see this. <laughs> the first thing I'm going to do is um, lower the opacity on my sketch so that when I'm doing my line work, I can see it a lot better. And um, then over here, I have a few brushes favorited. Um, I have and just the... real quick, Noah, we're we're in Adobe Fresco, correct? Yes. Uh, thank okay, you I just so much. Make, yeah. Yeah. I just want to make sure. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yes. We're in Adobe Fresco. I'm using some vector brushes to uh, do my line work and color today. Um, and these are my favorites. I have the round brush, the taper, the begin taper and the end taper. Um, right now I am going to be using the taper brush and um, I'm also going to be using like a darkish purple to line it. Um, and the reason why I'm using a darkish purple to line it is because I want to um, I want to set it to multiply later um, okay. and then it will be... Uh, it'll be like the same color as my colors underneath gotcha. or like a darker version of the colors underneath. <clears throat> it's like my favorite little hack. I used to like, when I first started doing digital art, I used to literally change colors every single time that I was like drawing something where I was like, okay, this isn't the color that I want it to be, you know? <laughs> Um, yes. And so, yeah, I'm really glad that I don't do that anymore. You learn. You learn how to work, it's true. work smarter, not harder. Yes. Yeah. The more hours you put in, you're like, oh, my gosh, I can't. I can't yeah. change every line. It's also helped. I follow a lot of, like, art accounts on Instagram. And also mm -hmm. um, I follow a lot of art accounts on TikTok and they will just like post their own little hacks that they have yeah no it's it's been awesome uh obviously with the internet but especially social media um i feel like so many creatives share so many great tips and obviously here on adobe live too so i was literally about to say a that great place to learn tons of tips every day we've got so many amazing creatives on here always sharing so yeah no, um, I think that is a wonderful way to like learn new things about the program that you like to use to draw or mm -hmm. new programs that you want to learn how to use. I'm tilting this a bit more because I kind of want it to look like it's about to fall off of his head. Gotcha. It's going to be cute. Julia Judkins says good morning. Good a little morning, rainbow Julia. and a star. Hello, uh, I'm glad that you're here. I remember that you were uh, here yesterday. Yes, that's right. One of the, you choose, chose one of the numbers as well. Yeah. Uh, Annika Agarwal said, oh my God, these look amazing. Ah, Love thank you. Frago. Oh my gosh, yeah. Uh, that frog was really cute. I agree. Yeah. Let me lower this. And Michaela Nardia says, let's go lesbians, let's go. <laughs> yes. Excited. <laughs> I know the lesbians won. <laughs> it was a close race. It was. Oh, nice. I like that little. Oh, almost gonna spill it. Yeah. He doesn't know it's on his head. So, is this the Chinosaur? Is this so, the, no, the... this one is not gonna be the Chinosaur only because okay. um, when. Wade was talking about it. It was when I was yes. drawing the T-Rex. So the yes. T-Rex is going to be the Chinosaur. Okay. Okay. I was thinking of designing this one that I'm inking after like a matcha latte or something. Um, Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> or green tea. We could, we could say green tea since it's yeah, a tea yeah, party. Yeah. Look at him. He's having such a good time. He said, I just want to be here. Um, I'm actually going to bring the smoothing up a little bit. <laughs> just for his his neck, I want it to. Oh, wait, that wasn't smoothing. That was the size. There we go. 
Okay. I was just going to ask you, do you use any type of stabilizing it? So there's like a smoothing. Yeah. It, um, I don't know. It makes it feel like really clean to me. And I, I just oh, like yeah. the way that it looks. Well, it can be hard to, with a tablet. Um, sometimes it can be hard to get those clean lines and get a little bit of jitter, you know, because right. you don't have that same friction that you would have with canvas or paper. Right. So, yeah. It's super and also helpful. some people, some people just also don't have as steady of a hand either. So yeah, it kind of allows you to make lines that maybe would be more difficult to make or just you know what if you drank too much coffee that day <laughs> right exactly which we yeah. all do i have my iced coffee yeah. with me there you as go. i did yesterday oh my gosh yeah, um something that was fun was that i got to like some people came into my instagram and commented after the live ended yesterday and one of those people was the person who uh asked for number 14 which ended up being the iced coffee at the end um nice. and when i looked at their profile i literally drew them like it it was the same person and i was like oh my gosh wild that's so funny that's so funny also going back to smoothing um and you talking about that like not everyone has the same steadiness in their hands. Um, yeah, I think that's like a really cool point to bring up because like accessibility is so important, you know? And like, yeah, yeah, it just because someone does not have as steady of a hand as someone else, that doesn't mean that mm -hmm. they can't draw. Right, which could be, you just don't have a steady your hand or mm -hmm. it could be uh, there's like a disability or something mm -hmm. that you're trying to overcome with the drawing. And so, exactly. Yeah, exactly that is the best part with digital tools is that, you know, and I think more and more um, developers are really thinking about that um, accessibility when they're, when they're making these, this type of software. So Which is yeah, so Fresco's, cool. Fresco's great. It's um, <clears throat> the more and more I see of it uh, and people use it, the more I'm impressed. Yeah. Um, I also want to continue the conversation of accessibility because um, something that digital art in general is really helpful with is like, then I, I don't have to buy like a whole set of paints and I don't have to continue to replenish them. I don't have to buy a bunch of different types of markers and pens and everything. Um, I buy like the tablet that I draw with, the pen and then the program and then I can create you know yeah it's it's yeah it's, there's like a, a fine line of you know initial investment is more but in the end it's it's much cheaper and um it's you you can usually find ways to you know get these tools even if um it might be out of your price range or there might be ways to make payments or something it just it mm -hmm. does feel like you can you can find a way to kind of get these things and, and yeah in the end it's like you can you can use it anywhere there's no there's no cleanup there's no mess oh um, my gosh it's yes. always ready to go so there's there's a lot of things that are sometimes the cleanup is what keeps me from creating i'm like oh <laughs> yeah set up clean up i mean especially with painting it's it can be a lot you know yeah you know, just to have the the space for it the, you know that's it can be really tough yeah the space oh my gosh i didn't even realize until um i became more of a full-time artist that you need so much space to keep your things <laughs> and i yeah. was like oh i live in an apartment <laughs> right uh wade chimed in with the t-rex if that oh, wasn't obvious. A T Rex. It's a T Rex. We should just just should you know T Rex the Chinosaur. That's the Chinosaur. Thank thank you, Wade. You came in early. <laughs> came in early with the puns. Keep them coming. It might give us ideas. And I don't think we checked yesterday, but um if everyone in the chat wants to let us know where they're signing in from and yeah. hanging out we'd love to hear where you guys are from and it's always fun to kind of know 
you, you, you know, I'm here in LA, you're in Sacramento. Yes. It's really cool when you find out there's people from all over the world hanging out with us. Um, yeah. So. Please tell me where they're from um, when yeah, they start typing. Know. And yes. um, one of the things that uh, was really cool for me was that like my portfolio tells me like where people sign in from. Like there'll be like a new visitor from you know uh kentucky or something um gotcha, yeah. and i had people literally from around the world visiting my portfolio yesterday and i was like oh my gosh this is so cool yeah it's very cool uh ray lancashire's from london england Ooh. Hello, barbara h ulsher is from nashville home yeah. of creativity yes <laughs> music city usa very much so taylor grigio's from las vegas Yes. Got some cartoony uh, steam coming off of the teacups. I like it. It's, yeah, watching that brush, it's almost like a snake, right? Just, yeah, it's so yeah, satisfying. It's really, <laughs> that's very cool. Wade's coming in from Jackson, Jackson Missouri. Is it Missouri? Oh, yeah, okay. I thought it was going to be a uh, Jacksonville, <laughs> like uh, Florida. Oh, sorry. Maybe that's Mississippi. Am I saying the right? <laughs> MS is mis uh, Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I think Missouri's MI. I Oops. don't know them either. It's fine. Or Michigan. Jeez, I'm just, I'm failing right now, guys. Okay. Steve Festus Casaboom is from New Zealand. Hey, hey Steve, he's on here all the time. How's it going? A I know Kiwi. Mississippi. I messed up, Wade. Sorry. <laughs> oh wait, that was wrong. There we go. Corrado Vincetti is from Italy. Ooh. Ooh, everyone was going to Italy for a second there. I felt like our like collective hide mind was like, let's let's all go to Italy and New York. Sounds, that was like sounds wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Also, just so everyone knows what I did right here, I used the lasso tool to select a very specific area that I wanted to erase. And then I just erased it so that I could get like super close in and I didn't have to worry about like changing the size of my eraser or anything. Gotcha. And then I deselected it. <laughs> I feel like we can see his, wait. Okay, let me draw the table so that I can know if I can see his feet. Because <laughs> if I don't have to draw T-Rex feet, that would be really, really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd be amazed the, the tricks that so many famous artists use to kind of avoid painting or drawing things that they don't want to paint or draw. <laughs> right. <laughs> You know, the classic, was... like, hand in the pocket, and you're like, oh, yeah, the other hand Well, is somebody, just... um, do, you, I, do you know the artist Frank Frazetta? No, I don't. Did a lot of uh, fantasy art. Um, uh-huh. Kind of like Conan, Dungeons and Dragons kind of thing, you know. Oh, okay, kind of cool, fantasy. cool, cool. Um, back in, the, I think it was like 60s, 70s, 80s. Um, incredible oil figure painter. But you start to realize that he hides all of his feet and a lot of his characters. And really? And yeah, and it's funny because I never thought of it. I remember watching the documentary on it. I was like, he does do that. And I started looking <laughs> at all his paintings. It's like, he barely draws feet. These are they're in a swamp or a pile of, you know, corpses or, you know, some dragons. You know, it's like that's there's, amazing. There's no, feet, there's no feet to be found. So it's you know it's how clever can you be and kind of knowing your strengths it's like yes you want to challenge yourself but also you know you, you kind of know your limits sometimes you're like well. mm, i can't do feet so <laughs> yeah i'm not <laughs> still, still practicing that's okay not everyone needs to do feet <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. i'm gonna make this a fancy teacup the handle's gonna do that Ooh. Mm -hmm. not everyone has the same teacup maybe this one will have a design on it I like that though. I like the eclectic tea party. Yes. They found all of these at thrift stores and 
That's why they're all different. I like it. Maybe this Where one did they is... find the dinosaurs? <laughs> <laughs> the dinosaur said we were always here. We were just miniature. Oh, uh, there we go. And you add tea to them and they go. Broop. Exactly. Uh, yeah, they said the only way we could get bigger is if you throw us a tea party. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what these lesbian fairies are doing, which is so sweet. Oh, I forgot they're fairies too. Yeah. Yeah, you can't really tell because it's a sketch, but there's like giant mushrooms back here. And I'm and these to see are going to be like, now. yeah, yeah. And like these are going to be like blades of grass, you know? Gotcha. Yeah, they're like teeny tiny. Hmm. This one, this will have hearts on it. Perfect. Now, do you mostly draw on the iPad or? I do. Uh, yeah, I um, I want to uh, eventually get a tablet so that I can like draw straight onto the computer. Um, that's mm -hmm. like the goal. Um, yeah. But right now I draw on my iPad, my trusty iPad. I've had it for like a few years now. Um, we were talking about this before stream, but I... Uh, I've been drawing digitally since about 2017, 2018. Um, and when I first started, I was just using my finger on my phone. It was a journey. I look at some <laughs> of my old pieces and I get to like be excited about how far I've come. Yeah. Um, a lot of times you'll actually see it if you, uh, choose to like look at my, uh, Instagram a bit, but I will redraw pieces like sometimes once a year or I'll like find a piece that I did like a long time ago and redraw it just because I like to be like, look at how different I do this now. Yeah. It's cool to kind of show the, the adventure, like the, you know, how, how you got there and. You know, it's like, there I was and here I am now and how things yeah. have changed. Your skill level has increased. It's good motivation for you and for other people as well to kind of see. It's like, even when you start out, you know, just a little bit of time and practice and you can start to make the things that you see in your head. You can make them come out on paper. Yes. Uh, do you remember the first time that you like successfully drew something that you saw in your head? <clears throat> oh, boy. Um, I don't, I don't know if I have a specific memory. I've been drawing, I've been drawing since I was probably about three or four and yeah, I still same. remember some of my first, first drawings, but I used to copy, uh, sticker packs that I would get oh, yeah? from the grocery store or whatever. Yeah. I remember it would it'd always be like these little dogs and like superheroes and like other weird things. And I would just even like army men that they would have. And I would just uh -huh. sit and copy them into my sketchbook and like create scenes I never use the stickers. I would just copy the stickers. <laughs> I love that. I had a um I had a SpongeBob joke book that I would I would copy <laughs> from. Um I got so good at drawing SpongeBob. Um <laughs> I funny. would I would just look at the picture and then I would draw it next like next to me. Um were the jokes any good? <laughs> Maybe for my like nine year old mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if I looked at them now, I'd be like, no, these are just like Wade's puns, yeah. you know? It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Wade, you could have a career as a uh, joke book writer. I, yes. I feel like Wade could create a dad joke book. Oh my gosh, and that would be amazing. It would be a bestseller. Yes. Just leave All right, you gotta do it behind, now. behind Wade. Yes. <laughs> The dad joke book. Get famous. Yes. Yeah. I'm excited to see what Wade thinks about that. <laughs> <laughs> Annika agrees. Thank you. Good. <laughs> Validation. <laughs> Wade says, oh, wow. I hate it. Let's do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
that that That's you'd the be happy energy about I that. need. Yes. Yeah. All right, let's see. Love doing hands. <laughs> That's good. Not a lot of people do. Oh, I it's was good. being sarcastic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I didn't I didn't I didn't pick it up, sorry. <laughs> I, I love this. Yeah, I'm like, ooh. Uh, yeah. Go oh, bury my head. Right. Hello. Um, yeah, no, hands are very difficult. Very, it's a very, there's so many different shapes within the hand and the, and the rhythm. And I've been drawing them for so long and I still feel like I get them You're wrong like, constantly. Sweating, trying to get them on the paper. <laughs> Hmm. I, what was I doing? What was the goal with, <laughs> I like, with <laughs> my, I don't know where, um, what's up what, with the sketch? Yes. <laughs> I'm like, how did I do that hand, Noah? It okay. almost looks like there is two arms. Yes, I agree. Involved. It does. Was I just like, pick one. We'll see. Okay. Okay. I'm going to just do this myself. Yeah, I was going to say, there you go. I did want her arm to be wider, though. There we go. And then I'll just uh, get rid of this guy right here. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. There we go. And I'm just going to repeat that. We got a quick them. adjustment. Yeah, Perfect. yeah. That's why uh, the sketches are not where you have to go with your with your piece. I think that... Yeah, it's, it's guidelines, right? You know? But yeah. It's, you know, loose, loose guidelines. Exactly. You can always change things. Like, there's people who, like, do the like do their sketches and then they'll like change entire expressions or like mm. uh, add something completely new to it you know so you can literally do anything with your sketch your sketch is like a suggestion to yourself i'm like low-key sketching these hands and then i'm going to connect them because i'm like yeah that's fine what what am i what do i want okay well and sometimes like you said it's it's like you you got an idea you got the sketch down but then as you're working on it maybe some things haven't worked out work worked themselves out just yet and you kind of have to nudge them a little bit yeah when you draw cartoons or do you draw you you said you do comics do you draw um more like I do I do a lot of like stylistic characters okay. and concept care yeah so yeah I definitely do some crazy exaggerations and I was going to ask do you do um do you do four fingers or five um depends yeah. um, if it's yeah if human characters I'll usually do five um it's for some yeah it's like alien creatures or depending on the simplicity of the character i might reduce the amount of fingers just because it it helps with the design it can get it can get complicated right if you have you know five five fingers on there um mm -hmm. it can get a little too complex if you're if you're going for big bold shapes and so but yeah just depends i hear you <laughs> but you know i, I mean that's you. the thing is when you when you're doing stylistic you know and you're choosing you're really pushing it, it as long as it reads it doesn't really matter right right it's like it's you just it's about making it making it look uh, appealing to you or, or appealing to somebody else and so i think as long as it's people aren't looking at it and they're like what is that <laughs> yeah I agree. Like it's a hand. Those are fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, sometimes I 
like I do the thing where like the character is doing this and then I just lump these together as oh, yeah. like one thing and I'm like that's you know what that is that's a great design trick yeah no it's completely yeah you can you know you have a breakaway shape you know one of the fingers yeah. breaks away from the yeah that's I love that's that I think it looks so cool <laughs> they, and they do do that a lot with uh you know cartoons and and, and stylized comics and even yes. even with I mean, my the comic I'm working on is pretty realistic, um, mm-hmm. but even then, as I'm designing hands, you know, you, you're you're grouping fingers together, and it just looks better design wise. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna have a cut like that for the shirt, and then. She has like a little, what are these called? A headband? Yeah, Or no, again? is that like a, is that like a little cap? Um, No, it is a headband, but it's like, the, oh, bandana, bandana. Oh, bandana, okay, okay. Yes, 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 yes. She has a little bandana. A headscarf. Yeah, a headscarf. Oh my gosh, she's adorable, and she knows it. Well, she's we like, are officially thirty minutes ee- into the stream. Very exciting! Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome. This is day two with Noah Aspen. And Hello. Yesterday, hi. Uh, <laughs> yesterday we had Pride prompts, and we had people choose numbers that would reveal different ideas that Noah went ahead and sketched. Um, after that, they were chosen on the Instagram between three of which one we we're going to do. Ended up choosing, of course, the lesbian dinosaur tea party. Mm-hmm. Who wouldn't want to see that be drawn? So <laughs> today we're going to do a final drawing and painting, hopefully if we've got enough time. Uh, and also we're going to be doing an artist spotlight today, about an hour and a half into the stream. So welcome everybody. If you're on YouTube, hi everybody joining us on uh, Behance Live. Uh, Comment in the chat. If you guys have any questions, please ask Noah. Um, we the hardest love the questions. questions you have. Yeah, ask the hardest questions. <laughs> make, make us make us uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get awkward. No. <laughs> We're like, oh, I think we have to end the stream. <laughs> but this is adobe live pride week and so we're we're really excited to have noah on and um, this is already adorable i think is uh, the right word for this one i appreciate we're getting in getting in with the lashes yeah those nice details she deserves them oh no there we go look at them oh my gosh amazing pretty cute i dig the eyebrows too thank you i like do such thick eyebrows for like all of my characters um and it's actually something that i think is a really cool like it's it's just something i've noticed with a lot of artists where i'm like you draw like what you see in yourself on like Mm -hmm. your original characters a lot of the times like um yep. i'll see people who like their nose is shaped a certain way and so like a lot of their characters have noses that look like their nose you know um mm-hmm. or and like for me i have really thick eyebrows and like all of my characters have thick eyebrows even if i'm like trying to make eyebrows thin there's a lot of times when like um i'll like finish a commission and the person messages me and they're like hey can you make the eyebrows <laughs> and i'm like yeah i got you i'm sorry yeah, fine. <laughs> okay if you say so they look really good though <laughs> <laughs> yeah you mean thicker right of course <laughs> i could do that for you uh taylor asks what kind of mm-hmm. dinosaur is your favorite mine um so when i was a kid um i feel like it was such a tie between um this guy right here the it's brachiosaurus right yeah 
Yeah. Um, and Triceratops, of, of course, the classic, you know. That is a good one. Yes. The Triceratops is a very cool, very cool Ceratops. Yes. Uh, what about you? Oh, boy. I've got so many now because my son is five and he is That's the... really into dinosaurs. And so now I've learned about so many there's this one that's pretty crazy that I really love. It's called a Therizinosaurus. Okay. okay. It has giant, giant claws that it uses to dig with. What? And it is the craziest looking dinosaur. It's like a giant lizard sloth. <laughs> that's so, so cool. Look it up. Therizinosaurus. It's a crazy one. All right, chat. Right. Tell me what it looks like. Does it look like a sloth? A dinosaur sloth? Dinosaur lizard sloth. Dinosaur lizard sloth. <laughs> <laughs> That's really yeah, cool. Pretty, there's a great new documentary on uh, Apple TV Plus right now mm -hmm. called Prehistoric Planet, hosted by the great David Attenborough. All and, right. And it's all it's five five part miniseries all about uh, kind of like the new findings of dinosaurs and like updated scientific research, and it's incredible. I mean, it's the footage, the computer graphics they use to model the dinosaurs. It's really, really awesome. So if you guys like dinosaurs, check it out. That's so cool. I um, I uh, used to watch. Oh, go ahead. Did someone say something? Oh, I was just saying, Julia was asking um, how much of your dino favorites were inspired by The Land Before Time. Oh, my gosh. I... I loved that TV show. Um, so probably the Brachiosaurus love came from Land Before Time because mm. of Little Littlefoot. That was his name, I think. Littlefoot. Yeah. yeah. Littlefoot. He was a cutie. He had, he had Sarah. Which yeah. Ceratops. Yeah. Ducky. Ducky was adorable. Ducky was peachy. <laughs> yes. Peachy. That's so funny, like, as an adult being like, oh, that's why they called them that, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. It's all making sense. Now. Yeah. Uh, Ray Lancashire was asking, does your star sign relate to your creativity? Um, I feel like it can relate to... Oh, so, by the way, I'm a Gemini. Um, so, um, I kind of feel like it can relate to how I really go with the flow when I'm drawing. Like I don't get super stuck on how anything is supposed to look. Um, sometimes like the drawings are like, no, we're actually going to look like this now. And you're like, oh, okay, you know? <laughs> so I feel like being an air sign and being able to adapt to different changes, it comes out in my art. But that was a cool question. No one's ever asked me that before. It's a great answer. Thank you. <laughs> so I think I remembered my, I think the, so the sun sign, right? That's like the main one that everybody knows, right? Yes. So that yeah. One's, that one's Taurus for me. Right. And then I think the moon sign was Capricorn. Okay. And I can't remember what what is it ascend the ascending? Yeah, you're you're okay. rising. Rising. Okay, I'll have to look that one up. I looked it up. Yeah, I was so proud. I was like, I'm gonna bring it up. And, and <laughs> totally. You got to screenshot it. it next time so I that know. you have it. Blew it. Blew it. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Next time, the next stream you're on, it's like not even us, and you're like, "Hey, I would like to bring this up really quick." <laughs> yeah, Noah, if you're watching, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Can I Facetime you during the stream so that everybody? <laughs> Absolutely, <can use> <laughs> and I'll be like, yeah. "Hey, this <laughs> Noah. She was wondering what my rising sign was." Right. <laughs> All right. Let's see. So this person is um, in my brain wearing like a a sheer um, top on top of their outfit. Um, so the the shirt, like the the shirt that they're wearing, is long sleeve and like and it's like close to their body. But then on the outside, there's gonna be a sheer top that has like flowers and butterflies in it that's like the vision okay because they're a fairy i can dig it Boop. 
boop, boop, boop. That is very fairy, very ethereal. Exactly. Light. Yes, that's the goal. And they're holding their little teapot. So this is all be done with vector brushes, right? Yeah, all of the line work I've been doing is with vector brushes. I'm probably also going to color with them, too. I just really like them. They make me happy. Well, and I'm assuming it vectorizes everything, which mm -hmm. allows you to kind of make this piece as big as you want, which is pretty awesome as well. So cool. It's <laughs> it's it's really nice. Um, working with uh pixels is like really hard when you're trying to get things a certain size yeah you kind of just have to make it you just have to work big yeah it's kind of your only option which can be tough with especially with the ipad yeah because um, it can be limited with um kind of how big you can make some of your pieces or how many layers you can use and Yes, it does limit the layers, which is also very hard because then you're like, okay, I'm gonna, I guess I'll merge these ones and I'll, I'll yeah. get rid of this one, you know? Gotta make some tough decisions. Yeah. <laughs> Julia says, I missed your intro, Noah. What are your pronouns? I love your art. <laughs> My pronouns are they, he. Thank you so much for asking. I appreciate it. All right. I think I'm going to do the sheer top on a different layer. So I'm going to leave this like this for now. I Good think idea. I want to do their wings on a different layer too. I want to fix this line. <laughs> And make it more down here. Oh, and their little doilies. Gotta have doilies. You gotta. Gotta have the doilies. Were these the original coasters before? <laughs> I think so, right? Everyone just had doilies and they were like, well, that doilies, works. Yeah. Do they like, um, do doilies, uh, what's it called? Do you have to like throw them away after a certain amount of uses? Is that how they work? I think you just wash them. I think. Yeah. Like hand, hand wash them, I believe. They just Don't we all it. have doilies? <laughs> <laughs> I think my grandma had some doilies. Yeah. <laughs> I know my grandma had doilies. I had, my great grandma like would literally um crochet like doilies which was really oh cool. yeah yeah that's that's the best part uh julia's asking what the benefit of using multiple layers oh um so what's really cool about using multiple layers is that uh you you can okay so i'm i'm done with this layer right so if I make a new layer, like I just did, um, I can bring it like underneath my line art. Um, and then if I want to start drawing their wings, okay? Let's say I mess up and I'm like, oh, I went like too far into the hair. I didn't want to go that far. Um, I can erase anything I want to without touching the other line work that I did because it's not on the same layer. Um, yep. So it's like very helpful. It's a nice almost preservation tool. Mm -hmm. um, like, okay, I want to preserve these lines, but I need to draw with them. And how can I, so creating a new layer helps. So you're not, you're not, uh, not manipulating the other layer at all. And also right. to, to set things back, right? Behind. Yes. Like once you start coloring, 
Mm-hmm. You can set a layer behind another layer, so you don't. And have I don't to have to worry about it touching just my perfect. light art. You can just, ah. Yeah, exactly. Um, which is super nice. Um, I was gonna say uh, my sketch is on a different layer, so I, if I don't want to look at it anymore, I literally could turn it off and like. Yep. <gasps> Ooh, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> We're not there yet. We're not there yet. But yeah. Just freestyle it. Sorry. No more sketch layer. I know. It's in your head. You just got to do it now. This but, is the challenge. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to tell you. Uh, an hour <laughs> in, you are forced to turn off your sketch layer and you have and to draw like, it from memory. Oh, no. You're Everybody like, has a to do it. Challenge. Yeah. This is how we do it on Adobe Live. <laughs> I like fairy wings because you literally like you can't do them wrong. They just no are. It's the beauty of, of fantasy in general. Is yeah, can't really mess it up. And if people say you did, then they're wrong. They don't have a big enough imagination. That's, yes, that is the problem there. Let's do this. She really likes hearts. Um, she, her heart, her cup has hearts. She's wearing heart earrings. Um, so I figured her wings would have them too. Ray has a very good question. Does mm-hmm. Fresco auto save your drawings? Yes, it does. Not, okay, I was like, you gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does. It auto saves to the cloud. Um, cool. Which is super cool. And that's um, the de- that's the default setting for it, right? Yes. Okay. That is the default setting for it. So um yeah, it's super cool. And then um because it's in the cloud, um, if you wanted to move it to any other program, you could. Um, which is really convenient, I think. Right. Yeah. If you want to take it into Illustrator or Photoshop afterwards, mm-hmm. uh, that is really you can just grab it from the cloud, which is always awesome. I'm trying to do the same thing that I did here, right here. Um, And then let's see, maybe we'll do a little like. That's nice. I learned how to do these things because I actually used to be a full-time face painter. (laughs) And so we would just do a bunch of designs. Yeah. When were you doing that? It was a few years ago um, when I worked at that theme park. Um, mm-hmm. I would paint faces. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Making a bunch of kids happy. Yeah. It that's was. Fun. It was really fun. I really enjoyed it. I like know how to paint like a tiger face on people in like two <laughs> minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like what happened to you? No, I painted another tiger face on me. <laughs> it's only been like two minutes. It's, They're like, that's, really all, that's all they yeah. need. That's all they need. Yeah. They just come out of left field and next thing you know, tiger face. Right. I got to go to work in five minutes. Yeah, it's tiger face. It's, I mean, it, it comes off with water. So just. Yeah. <laughs> just, just wash it. It's fine. Did you ever do face painting anywhere else? Was it only at the uh, theme park? Um, I I did it like a little bit. Like it, this will sound weird at first, but I did it virtually for a little bit. And what it was was that I would have like a face painting kit and the people online would have a face painting kit and I would like explain what to do to do the face paints. Very cool. Um, kind of like a, uh, like a lead tutorial like virtual tutorial and how to yeah that's really cool yeah okay let's see um i did these so loose these are gonna be my little blades of grass there we go and then maybe like that You know how blades of grass have the little 
line in between mm-hmm. them. I don't know about you, but I've studied Blades of Grass when yes. I was in PE and I didn't want to be doing anything else. <laughs> like, uh, no, I'm working here. <laughs> this is These important. need to be inspected, actually. And then I'll do... I think this was supposed to be another mushroom, but like behind everything. And then I'll do another blade of grass right here. One peeking out from the hair. Cool. And then something I wanted to do on a layer above this one was map out where the flowers on her sleeve were. Nice. And like the butterflies. Very pretty. And then we'll do one right here. And another butterfly. And then uh, I'm going to actually add another layer just to do where the sheer top is. Oh, I see. I was wondering, I was like, why is that butterfly coming off the end? Okay, I see. It's like, it's there's a overlap on it. Uh, yeah. Makes, makes sense now. Okay. You'd explained it, but I wasn't quite sure yet. I thought it was going to be like a skin tight kind of. Oh, yeah. You know. Underneath, they have like a skin tight shirt, but right yes, here. That, that makes sense. The sheer tank. Or not tank, but top oh wait that actually has to be inside wow look at her okay cool so now i'm gonna get rid of my sketchy sketch Boop. goodbye um and Ooh. we're gonna color and we'll color Ooh. for you know the time that we have to color and then um, anything that doesn't get done today, it will get done. All right. Later. Well, we've got about we've got about forty minutes until we um, do the artist spotlight. Cool. Just so you know, Noah. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah, and if you all are joining us right now, welcome. If you're on YouTube watching, welcome. If you're on Behance Live, thank you for joining us. There we go. Um, can always hop in chat, and there is an artist spotlight tab in the chat on Behance Live fill out the form vote for yourself or vote for someone else that you want to see spotlighted on the show um it's really cool we take a look at different artists every time and kind of hype up their art and hope that other people will go and follow them and you guys can connect um but yeah that's this is exciting we've got got 40 minutes we're gonna have uh, anywhere from five to ten minutes afterwards Mm -hmm. for just final touch-ups and wrapping up Um, cool so so now are you going to be using um, the same uh, pen for the fill-in as well? No, um, okay. I'm going to be using the round uh, vector brush okay. um, to, to fill in everything. Do I have anything on this layer? No. I could, you know, write down what I have on my layers, but why would I do that? Yeah, you know... <laughs> organizing layers labeling yeah <laughs> this is free fluff we don't right do we don't do exactly <laughs> thank you for but understanding yeah if, you, yeah if you need to label your layers do it it's i will yeah. yeah it can it can help people don't you know it can don't get, i'm being don't, I'm thankfully being you don't steady. you don't have too many you don't have too yeah. many so it's it's easy to navigate but if yeah if you start going upwards of uh 
over 15 or 20 layers probably want to start layering them or start labeling them agreed nobody I'll wants to do play as the, i the do clicking, the clicking game like on off on, yeah. on, off. Where is, i've done that where i'm like i'll go through the whole thing I'm like i don't i don't know where it is like how can i not find this layer i can see which ones are on <laughs> where right uh, yeah i i've definitely done that before when there's like a random like dot or something and i'm like mm -hmm. i can't erase you like what layer are you on <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you go How through each you one and you're like yeah <laughs> how did you find yourself on my paper <laughs> It is amazing. Um, it's like, I just don't get it. I don't get how it's here. So what I just did was I threw the purple layer um, onto multiply. And then I brought down the opacity. Um, and now I am throwing on some color. Um, I'm kind of just outlining the part that I want to color. And then I'm just going to fill it in. Um and what i like about it is that you can kind of see here is that wherever it was multiplied it uh just becomes a darker version of that color um right. and for me i like that because i feel like it's not as harsh as having a black line like black outline for my line work yeah and that's something that um with cartooning and animation you'll see a lot um and obviously back in the day when it was sell vinyl and stuff they would just paint those lines darker colors or sometimes mm -hmm. even lighter colors. if you have really dark colors they would use lighter colors to yes accent the shapes so it's definitely an old school uh old school style but there's so many uh, new ways to kind of achieve it and so this is a cool one i haven't seen this one oh, thank you yeah i like this idea. this is uh this is one of those ones that i learned from uh from a like art TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm such a precisionist that like it's it this would be hard for me because I uh I would want to make sure it would be perfectly on the line. So it's, right. I, I I just go and I I uh I lock the pixel layer and then you know choose choose a, a color for it and then I'll go ahead and just manually do it. But um I this hear definitely you. is yeah, it's like it's that, but that's why there's so many different ways to kind of achieve whatever look you're going for. Um, totally, it's really cool. I also like I used to shade like this, but then and you'll see if like we get to the shading here, I mm -hmm. found out that like instead of purple with multiply, um, when it comes to shading, I actually really like the the like a dark blue and then mm -hmm. color burning um because yeah. i think that that looks really cool i like the way it plays yes. with the colors um mm -hmm. but yeah that was like a recent thing that i was like oh this could be really cool yeah no and that's and it's fun too with the shadows too you can kind of play with the opacity as well yeah kind of, yeah but yeah, the dark blue is nice because it kind of creates the cooler shadows. So if you have warm lighting, it's nice to have that that cool shadow. That that dark blue works really well. Yeah. Ah, oh, playing around with lighting is so fun. Uh, there's like so many like overlays that you could play around with, and then like erase certain parts of it so that uh, it only hits like certain places on the character. Um, mm -hmm. It's just like, it's really fun to just experiment and play around, which like goes back to what I was talking about um, during our first stream where I was like, you don't have to be perfect, especially if you are just sketching around, just do whatever, you know, you are learning. This is your time to just play around. Yeah, completely. And you want to have fun. I mean, yeah, obviously you know if it's your full-time job or it's a, it can't always have lots yes. of fun <laughs> yeah but, agreed you know if yeah especially with sketching sketching you want it to be enjoyable because you you know especially if you if you do want to be a professional artist you're going to be sketching a lot and so you you want to make it make it an experience that you can do often and find a lot of value in yeah agreed and also just to 
find a way to relax and do it and not, you know, find times to do it where it's not part of your job or it's not something yes. you have to worry about. It's just it's more of an exploration or therapy or catharsis or, you know. Yeah, something I get asked a lot is like, well, do you even like to draw anymore since you like do it for work? And uh, I do. I really, really do because <laughs> I, uh, I find ways to, oh, no. Um, I find ways to draw um, just for fun, like purely for fun. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what, that's, oh my gosh, there we go. Um, that's what's like important is that I like take time to be like, okay, today I'm not doing any commissions. I am just drawing because I really want to draw this thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you got to find time to make, make stuff for yourself. Yeah. She's going to have pink hair. I like it. I like it with that, uh, the skin tone as well. Yeah. It's a good match. Thank you. Cotton candy hair. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Tammy Alice Aylster says, oh my God, so cute. Oh, thank I you. Agree. Yeah, uh, y'all y'all picked a good one. This is really cute. That was that was the last one, right? No, the iced coffee was the last one. Yeah, the iced coffee was the last one. It was close last. We almost didn't get to the dinosaur tea party. Was, I know. What would have become of day two? <laughs> what do you did you have one that you thought was gonna end up being done today? What's that? Did you have one of the prompts where you were like, maybe they'll pick this one? Like, did you have one that you you had speculated we would be doing today? No, I didn't know. I wasn't. I was going in with an open mind. Nice. I didn't, I didn't want to make any decisions. Yeah. You know, I wanted, <laughs> yeah. I wanted to just let it happen because I would have had no idea that this was going to be <laughs> so yeah. a great, a great surprise. Okay. Cool. That that's awesome. Hello, Sam. Welcome to the chat. Hi, Sam. And yes, it is a good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. For all the people watching from all yes. over the world, thank you for joining us. That's so cool. And just a quick update, if you are just joining us, this mm -hmm. is day two with No Aspen, and we are doing the final painting from a sketch that we did from our pride prompts yesterday because guess what this is adobe live pride week which we're so excited to do this week and we have a dinosaur tea party people yes this is what's happening right now it's very exciting yeah, i've never seen one drawn yeah. before so this is this is brand new art i like it yes uh, you, you sure you've never just like seen someone draw Lesbian I have never seen party. someone draw a lesbian dinosaur tea party. I think <laughs> this is a first for me. And it's kind of crazy because you see art all the time. And I just, just, I don't think this is something I've seen drawn before. I love that. <laughs> I mean, could you hashtag that? Hashtag. I hashtag. should. <laughs> I mean, let's just continue to make hashtags for each stream. We're like, <laughs> yeah. all right, everyone, and hashtag lesbian dinosaur tea party. <laughs> Show me yours. Okay. Uh, Tammy was asking about the purple sketching. Uh, Tammy, if you just joined us, the uh, purple sketching was all done in Adobe Fresco. Mm -hmm. um, was that done with the, that was what brush was that? That was with the uh, taper uh, vector the brush. The taper vector brush. Mm -hmm. And then Noah set it to a multiply yes uh, setting and so now as he is doing the under color it is showing up through the purple and creating a nice darker uh darker shade of that color so it's a very cool technique it's really fun i enjoy using it oh i was like hello there we go There we go. Do, do, 
do, do, do. You said you're a perfectionist, or what was the word that you used to describe yourself? <laughs> I think I said precisionist. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but perfectionist, I think, uh, you know, sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. I, I mm-hmm. just, I've developed a style, and a lot of my work is very fine tuned. Yeah. So there's a lot of prep work, and um, I think just working in, with comics and working um, kind of uh, really graphic illustration, but then also highly rendered concept art. You kind of, you can go in really painterly, but the way that I do it, it's just, it's a lot of layers. It's a lot of prep work. Yeah. It's a lot of thought goes into all of it. So it, which, you know, which the end result, I, you know, I love, but it can be, it can be tough and tedious and, you know, but that's, kind of anything that you want to do you know it's not all not all uh, processes are uh, created equally and that's true. sometimes depending on what you want the outcome to be um sometimes the process could be a little more complicated yeah so um, but, I, mean, I, feel I, love, like... I love doing like this too you know i love the loose kind of yeah thing. i do that just as much in my free time I was going to ask, I was like, does this stress you out? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, all the time. You know, it's so funny. It's like the imposter syndrome uh-huh. where it's like, oh, they're hiring me because I made this piece of art. And you're like, can I make that again? You know, <laughs> yes. like, I've been doing it for 10 years, but could I do it again? You no. Know, what if I mess up? What if I can't, you know, what if I just choose the wrong things or make the wrong decisions? So I think that's that's doesn't matter how good how good you are i think people struggle with that all the time just reminding yourself you know why you're important you know what your value is yes and, and being confident in, in who you are in yourself and, and what you can make and create and so yeah that can be tough that can be tough especially with being a creative you're kind of always putting yourself out there and um i, I think sometimes that vulnerability can be stressful um No, I definitely agree. I think that um, the, I I remember like, especially when I was drawing as a kid and I would like draw something that I had like, I had never drawn anything like that before, you know, I would like Mm -hmm. look at it and I would be like, well, I can't do that again. Like that's never that's right. that's never gonna come out that way that's a again. yeah you know yeah <laughs> that was magic it happened and now mm-hmm. it's gone exactly yeah i mean i think that probably is one of the harder things about being a professional is um making sure you're consistent yeah and, um you know and that's that's really oh. most of you know, the professional industries, it's, you know, your consistency is kind of what drives those. So that, and that's what practice is for. And that's what the sketching is for. And that's why you, you want to have the fun Mm -hmm. while you're sketching and exploring because you might not be be able to have as much fun, you know, on a project or, you know, with guidelines and stuff. So it's, it's always important to get that fun in and to, to always be exploring, even if it's, even if you're not getting paid for it, you know, it's, you want to make sure you're still doing it. No, I absolutely agree. Hmm. I think that that's important. So, hmm, let's see. Do I want to do like a moth? I think that looks pretty. Okay, let's do that. Do, do, do. Okay, actually, I kind of want the teapot to be transparent. Ooh. So what I'm going to do is this, and then later I'm going to put an overlay on the teapot so that it distorts the color when it's going through the teapot. Kind of similar to the purple line work, but it'll be more of like a probably, do do you, would you do a multiply or it'd be more of like an opacity? Um, I act, I literally do like I, I change it to overlay. Yeah. Overlay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I do the same thing with glasses. Mm Mm-hmm. No, nope, that's not where I wanted you to go. I wanted you to go here. Thank you. Um, oh, and then let's do the rest of her arm. 
because he would be able to see it through the teapot. Right. Uh, Ray Lancashire is asking, how many hours do you usually take to finish a drawing? Um, if I have all the time in the world, I usually take about three hours to finish a piece. Okay. Um, do, and then, like, that's not including, like, any edits that, like, happen if, like, um if like one of my clients is like hey can you change this color or add this you know um right. but normally when i look back and i i see how much time i take it's usually around three hours three hours yeah yeah i mean i guess it also depends on the complexity or how many characters there are yes uh, okay something i wanted to do to make sure that i did before we end the stream as color the the china sore the china sore yes mm -hmm. that has to happen say t-rex the t-rex the china sore family yes oh nice okay uh and then going down here i actually think i want to do it backwards but let me do this first and then i'm going to change that to a darker one because then I oh, want the, the color. Yeah. And then I want little little dots. Actually, let me change the smoothing so that the circles come out. <gasps> no, come back. No. Um a bit more circle-y. Sir. <laughs> that was so rude it did it on purpose <laughs> for the final 20 minutes we will be trying to draw circles it yes. will be painful there will be yelling and screaming none yeah. of them will look right <laughs> exactly everything else has been carefree but this <laughs> part total frustration you're like so this is where you draw the line Noah <laughs> yeah I like this. I like this design. Thank you. It's very cute. I want to give him some here. So I'm feeling like this is the beginnings of some kind of uh, illustrative children's story. Right? So, I mean, I think we got a good foundation here. What would the story be about? Oh. I mean, definitely right. some kind of fairy world. Maybe dinosaurs aren't the only mystical creatures that come into this. Right. I guess dinosaurs aren't mystical. They're <laughs> <real. laughs> Okay, but they just but, seem they just <laughs> seem mystical. I guess a chinosaur but, is. Uh, chinosaur is mystical, and also we are specifically uh, making dinosaurs that are tiny, like minuscule dinosaurs. Right. Yes. How, how small um, it is? Because there were some tiny dinosaurs out there. There were well, some tiny baby woods. When I think of how small a fairy is, I don't think that there were any dinosaurs that tiny. I'm trying to, I know I'm like, hmm, maybe. You're I like, can. maybe I can debunk this. There's, <laughs> there were some tiny ones. I'm, just, I remember, like I said, my son has been, we've been like deep diving into right, like right. all the new findings. I know the Archaeopteryx is a very tiny one. It was like one of the first flying dinosaurs, Aww. flying reptiles. Um, oh, I feel like there was one that was like the size of a flying squirrel or something. Okay, these are definitely smaller than a flying squirrel because fairies are like this big. Oh, wait, I'm going to go by the mushroom. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
They're inside the blades like, of grass. Look, look, yeah, Come I was going to say, look at how big those blades Get of grass together. are. <laughs> okay. So I was right. So we're just going back to I was right. These are mystical. mystical right, right. Mystical, either mystical, either yeah. way in this argument, you're going yeah. to be able to be like, everything's fine. So I was correct. I should, <laughs> should just stop arguing with myself. It's embarrassing. Does chat have anything to say about how how big the dinosaurs are? Chat, how big are these dinosaurs? Let's let's hear it. How big are these fairies? Maybe those just those grass blades and um, those mushrooms are it's huge. Like tall grass. Yeah. Whatever. Maybe somebody was using way too many chemicals missed. in their grass or too much fertilizer. Just maybe I misled everyone. Yeah, so the scaling's all off. You're like, why didn't you think of the scaling when you started this? <laughs> Should have put something in there from real world other than grass and mushrooms. <laughs> Maybe a pencil. I like throw a pencil in the background like a skyscraper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's 1045, 1046 mm -hmm. Pacific Standard Time AM. And we've got about 15 minutes left cool. before we do the artist spotlight, which is super fun. If you're in the chat right now, if you're joining us on Behance Live, you'll see above the chat, there's an artist spotlight tab. Go ahead and click that, fill out the form. You can nominate yourself. Or you can nominate somebody else that you want to see spotlighted on this episode. Or sorry, on Adobe Live, not this episode. We've already chosen. But um it's really fun. It's, it's exciting. We get to hype an artist. Uh, hopefully everyone will go follow that artist, but it's just cool to see art that maybe you normally wouldn't see. So um, I always like the artist spotlight. So go ahead. It's in the chat. You can see the tab, fill it out and nominate yourself or someone else. And also just a reminder to everybody, it's Adobe Live Pride Week. We're here with Noah Aspen. This is day two. We are doing the final lines and colors on our lesbian dinosaur tea party. Mm -hmm. We've got a T-Rex. A, <laughs> a Chai tea. Chinosaur, yeah. Chinosaur. Chinosaur. Um, so I don't think we'll get to the end of it, but I know Noah is going to finish it either in a stream, no matter what, post it on social yes. media, on Instagram. And Noah, what's your Instagram handle again so everybody knows? Yeah, my Instagram is aspen.aspirations. And that's also the same for my Twitch. Um, Perfect. If I end up streaming this, yeah. And if you get the Behance, you could do you could live stream yeah. on Behance. We got live streaming, that's true. which is really cool. And you can use any kind of uh, third party uh, software. I know if you go into uh, Behance's live streaming, they have a lot of. Um, tutorials and things to explain to you how to use that i've done it it's really cool um a newer feature not not super new but it's something that's really cool and also remember if you guys if everyone didn't see the beginning of this mm -hmm. this is all going to be archived so you can go back you can watch it from day one all the way from the prompts and the sketches to where we're at now so Please don't don't panic if you, if you didn't catch everything. You can always go back and watch it, which is awesome. Yes. Do you ever go back and like watch yourself? You're like, how did I do? I've I've watched a few. It's kind of tough. <laughs> really? Tough to listen. Well, it's just hard to. I don't. I maybe I shouldn't. Say, I don't enjoy listening to myself that much. No, I I usually I'll go back and and look to just kind of make sure that um, you can hear me and um, yeah. Sometimes um, you know it, it, during the duration of a stream, sometimes you can start to mumble or you know your sound can be off or you're staring at the ground. So I think right. um, yeah, sometimes I'll go back and check and just be like, okay, how'd I do? Um, but other I times too, I mean, cool. we've had some really uh, fun artists. And so it's, yeah. it's also fun to go back and be like, oh man, I remember we did that thing and it was, it was fun to check out. So, oh my gosh, look uh, at him. He's really cute. He's just a chinosaur. Is this the cutest dinosaur you've ever drawn? I think so. All right. 
It was a really good idea, Wade. Good job, Wade. <laughs> Yeah, maybe maybe if I whisper for the rest of the it'll don't, be like ASMR. <laughs> yeah. This is now an AMSR show. <laughs> Turn up the volume. <laughs> maybe take a nap. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I did not. Put those close headphones that. on. All right, let me change this back to a round brush because I think that's it where... would just be uh, us pouring tea into a cup yes uh, taking small sips i remember when asmr like first came out and everyone was like listening to like um people like eat pickles and stuff and i was like no <laughs> why i don't want to hear I... people crunching uh, oh no i'm i'm an ocean waves kind of Kind of uh, something actually my kids let's see they have a sound machine they have like the falling rain which is really mm -hmm. nice that's that is enjoyable no that sounds nice um i uh oh wait did i do anything there we go um i like the thunderstorm sounds and i also like uh What's it called? Uh, oh, fireplace. There we go. Ooh, I like yes. fireplaces. The crackling of the fireplace. Yes. Oh. <laughs> it's very enjoyable. I feel like there's an edit. Uh huh. Ray does bring up a good point. What? We need cake. <laughs> We do need cake. You know, right? Maybe, just maybe, there's room on the table for cake. Well, I think we'll there see. is. We'll have to just wait and see. But, I actually um, think that there is room for cake on the table. It's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. Okay, that was wrong. That wasn't what I wanted to do. There we go. Oh, and then what I did want to do was fill this up with black. Hey. There we go. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Um, I do think there's room for cake on the table. Um, the thing that I would want to do is... Uh, take this off of multiply bring it up and make sure that i'm using the same color to draw the cake that i'm used that i used for the rest of my are, line work are we getting a cake right now yeah yeah, yeah. no <laughs> fearless i got it <laughs> ask um, and ye shall receive yes uh, let's see ray it's your lucky day you're getting a cake you're getting you a cake, Ray. That's that's what this is all about. No, I love it. I I'm glad that there was an element today that was suggested by the chat. Yeah. Wait, let me go like this. Yeah. And then I'm gonna. It's like you're eating it. Yep. Yeah. Yummy cake. <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna go back to this. What kind of cake is this gonna be? That's the real question. That's true. Come on, chat. What kind of cake? See, I I'm, I am a fond of carrot cake. Oh yeah. Um, I'm, I love cheesecake. I love cheesecake. Cheese cake. That was wrong. Yeah. Kind of looks like cheese some, right now. Maybe we get some suggestions from the chat. Yeah, that's what I... What is everybody's favorite cake? What would you like to see at this dinosaur tea party? Taylor says raspberry cheesecake. Ooh. This is going to be... I, it's still kind of early here. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, my wife's gonna see me like, are you eating cake? I'm right. Like, <laughs> we were talking a, about it. A, it. <laughs> yeah, it was a hard two-hour stream. And I wanted some cake. Like, All I got really to drink rough. was water for two hours. <laughs> Didn't have breakfast. I just want some cake. Okay, I'm gonna. Jack Jack Watson says, I love all cake, which, as you should. You should. Cake is wonderful. Let's see, Clever Devil and uh, Black Forest Cake. That's Ooh. amazing. I don't even, I don't know if I've had that before. Yeah, it's like a, it's a really it a nice, chocolate? yeah. Like a dark, dark chocolate or? Yeah. Mm. I I'm a big dark it? chocolate fan. Let's see what else we got here. Chocolate cake, cheesecake with cherries. Cheesecake with Ray, cherries. Yeah, Ray, who made the cake suggestion in the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, is coming in with chocolate cake. Nice, nice. That actually would go nicely with the uh, color scheme we got going on here. That's true. Um, Jack Watson also suggests sprinkles on a funfetti <gasps> cake. Oh, funfetti is cute. Could also be a good, a good choice. Yeah. For the color palette. Mm -hmm. Agreed. All right. Uh -huh. Thank you. Got a little more than three minutes left before we switch over to the spotlight. No. Okay. Just, you know. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. This has been fun. Look at us. I know. We're just appreciating each other. Here we go. I've 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 enjoyed the stream. And, I have too. You know, I always, I always hope I make it a little bit more enjoyable for the for the guest. Yeah. Tell tell him, Chad. You're doing all the hard work. <laughs> I'm just sitting here judging. <laughs> You're like, this stresses me out. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! Don't do that. Oh god. Oh. <laughs> no, it's it's actually. It's nice being on the other side sometimes. The yeah. Much less stress. I haven't felt stress. This has just been fun for me. Um, I like hearing people's suggestions. I like that there's no pressure. Um, and I like that you get to like meet new people. It's really cool. No, this has been great. This has been really fun. And anytime um, cake is suggested during a stream, it's mm -hmm. always a good sign. Right. Cake and dinosaurs, lesbians, cakes, dinosaurs, mm -hmm. always a good stream. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Adorable. Look at that cake. There we go. It's like multiply and then lower the opacity a bit. Wow. Okay. So I just finished the Chinosaur. I was able to finish this person right here. I have like one more minute. I want to show you something that I like to do um, when I am like finishing up something. I like to add highlight. So I go to like a yellow and then um, I do like a little highlight on the nose, like right here on the cheeks, like that. And then I will change it to overlay. And then I make it as like soft as I want to mm -hmm. and then she has like little highlights um and then I do um oh there we go um I do similar <laughs> things um as I did with the line work I do that to make blush um and I again as I talked about earlier I use like a dark blue to make the shadows and then I'll change it um to a color burn which is right here yeah, yeah and we have we have after the spotlight we'll have a like 
probably another five, 10 minutes. So if you want to do a little bit of the shadow afterwards, yeah, that'd be cool. great. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, cool. I think it is now 11 o'clock here. Mm-hmm. So we're an hour and a half in, and I think you're going to switch over to the artist spotlight. Very excited. Mm-hmm. This is our artist spotlight for today. Yeah. And Noah, I believe that you know this artist. Is that correct? I do. This is Jay. Um, they are one of my very good art friends. Uh, they make these beautiful, like, realistic pieces, um, but they also play around with texture so much. Um, mm-hmm. They are also a queer trans artist. They use he, they pronouns. Um, and... Uh, they use a laptop to draw and they just use the trackpad and they use their finger, which is so cool. So cool. That is easily my favorite part. Um, yeah. Because these are so detailed and uh, obviously from all grabbed from what looks like movie stills, uh, production mm-hmm. shots. But yeah, I mean it just goes to show that it's really about shape and color and value because look how crazy that is in there right that's a wild mess and i love it cool yeah i mean look (laughs) at all the different all the different brushes all the different kinds of strokes and everything's being done with their finger right just yes this Uh, trackpad oops sorry which is crazy but then you pull out and then you've got and you've got uh, this this whole picture (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah you pull out and then you're like wow like this this looks so like uh like it looks so smooth i feel like when you're far away and then when you zoom in you're like oh it's shapes you know yeah yeah Which there's so much yeah exactly i think it doesn't so but cool. there's so much going on but it doesn't detract at all from uh, the image as a whole yes um I also want to take a look at this. It's from uh, the TV show Hannibal. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. It's an intense, intense show. When they do hair, it's like purely just like different types of brushes. Um, Yeah, it's wild. This is why I love digital as well. I feel like you can really go crazy with uh, the brush styles. Yeah, it's super cool. Um, I really like how they don't spend a lot of time blending, but they like they know what values need to be in places so that your eye is like, this is a hand, you know? Right. And actually, you know, um, the fact that they're using um, production stills and shots from from film and TV shows, the people that are behind that that are creating these shots this is their job. I mean, they're already creating these wonderfully beautiful uh, cinematic palettes. So it's a great, it's a great place to study. Um, right. And so obviously Jay's taking it up a notch and taking these great palettes. And then really it's the textures, I think, that shine the most. I mean, yes. the, color, the colors are obviously beautiful, but uh, I think without those textures, it's just not as special. And like, I mean, just the way that where they put where they put everything it's really cool yeah and like the colors that they use like the shadow is just pure blue you know yeah and there's like and... yeah go ahead oh no wade, wade was right too it's, it's let your eye do the blending and the hard work and it's yes. true our brains do it for us it's like we naturally just want to blend those things anyways so it really is really is cool yeah it reminds me of like um how if you just show like half of a word um like the top half or the bottom half of a word usually you can your brain like can fill in the rest of it you know right right oh my gosh this is so cool look at these hands yeah these are really fun to zoom in on Well, and like we were saying earlier, it's kind of capturing that energy 
from the sketch, right? Yes, yeah. And like this one, movement. it's like it never ends. There's this the energies throughout the entire process. It looks yes. like yes. You know. uh, yeah, I love that there's movement. Um, something that we used to do because we have such wildly different art styles is that we would I would draw something in like my like stylized cartoony way. Um, mm -hmm. And then they would come in and they would uh, draw that character as if like in their style. So like, I feel like they literally would breathe life into my characters, which was it's so cool. cool. Collaboration is always fun. Yeah. Yeah, these are really, really beautiful. Yeah, the fire is very cool. Mm -hmm. That's where like they used more blending in it. Right, but it's just it all makes sense. There's yes. never there's not any place where I'm like, eh, they right? Been there. You know, it's like it's just like even all, in the background. Yeah, I think having those blurred backgrounds help a lot. Really. Yeah. Um, you're able to kind of focus on all of the heavy texture that's going on in the in the foreground. Yeah, and they do this with Photoshop is something I also wanted to mention. Yes. There is a uh, black and white piece, which is just pure yes. value. Yeah. These are great. So cool. Do you want to um, look at another piece? Why don't we do one more and then we can uh, get back to finishing up your, your painting. Sounds good to me. want to zoom in on this really quick. There's a cool like challenge that I've been seeing online where um, people will draw in grayscale, which... Um, like not everyone does especially if you don't go to art school you know um uh -huh. and so it's just cool to see how uh people are like just learning how to use value to mm -hmm. create their pieces yeah gosh these are really cool so cool the little splatters so if you thought drawing on a tablet was hard All right <laughs> Try, try a, a laptop. <laughs> yeah. Try a laptop trackpad. Holy cow. There's like little oh. like dots oh for the gosh. skin. These really are cool. Yeah. So cool. All the like if I'm just here, it just is a bunch of brush strokes, which is Yeah, it's still this kind of beautiful abstract, you know, painting. Yeah. So very, cool. very, very cool. Yay. So yeah. Jay Matteo. Jay, your work is amazing. Yes. So uh, exciting to yeah, have you on the spotlight. And again, if everybody, if you want to spotlight somebody or spotlight yourself, there's an artist spotlight tab. It's in the chat. If you look just right up to the right, fill out the form, nominate yourself, nominate someone else so we can hype them, get people to follow them. Um, well, cool. Thank you so much yeah. for sharing that with us, Noah. Yeah. Thank you, Jay, for all the incredible artwork. Yeah, it's so cool. Adobe said, I thought okay. you were done. <laughs> so we still got a little bit of time. Yes. A little bit of time. Fresco said, oh, I was um. Yeah, it's like, work. I Sorry. can't. I can't load that. <laughs> All right. So, so yeah, I want to show about, about 10 minutes left. So let's let's see what we can do. Cool. I want to show uh, how I do some of like my shading and my blush. So for yeah, blush, because... I do similarly to like with the multiply, but I actually bring it more onto the pinkish side. Um, and I'm putting it. Let me make sure. Uh... Okay, I want it underneath okay. my highlight. And I'm gonna do just little circles, boop. 
No. <laughs> I like keep doing that. <laughs> she was pink. Listen, that's not a bad thing. Hmm, I actually want it um going around that. Okay, let me add this in and then I'm gonna do a little because her nose rings would not have blush on them. Um Sometimes I also like to add them to the elbows because I just think mm -hmm. it looks very cute. Um, and then I also can add it to their little ears. And then I'm going to change it to multiply. So this is what it looks like right now. It darkens it. And then I find where I would like her blush to look. And mm -hmm. that is how I do blush. And then I'm going to go on top of that and also on top of my highlights and add a layer. Okay. And I'm going to grab a dark blue color. And then that's when I'm going to start doing my shadows. Um, oh. There we go. I have to actually lower that smoothing back down. And I just kind of, uh, I do it wherever i want it to be i don't really um i don't i don't get too stressed about where my shadows are as long as i know that maybe i've decided my light source is like right here or something um right, i try right. to keep that consistent but mm -hmm. um especially with like hair um i just kind of draw whatever um curls i want to and then i will just drop the color in and then i will do it over here maybe she uh goes like that taylor's okay. saying that's a cool way of doing the uh, shadowing and blush thank you Thanks, Taylor. Then I'm gonna drop that in. Where I have creases, I'll usually add something. Mm -hmm. I might actually add some here i think i told you yesterday that sometimes i add too much shadow and then i like look at it after i'm like okay um right <laughs> edit edit take away yeah <laughs> um and then i add some onto the face as well um i have some on my eyebrows uh I'm going to have it come down and over. But I also want it to go around the eye. And yeah, you can always add shadow, take away shadow. Um, I'm right. just doing it kind of quick right now because i want to when it's on you. its own layer so it's right easy to kind of add and take away without messing with anything else exactly oh that's an eraser there we go and then under the hand And I'm gonna add in this. And 
And then I'm gonna do a little bit right here. And then I'll I'll stop there for now so that I can show you what it looks like. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna stop there. I'm actually going to add some to this bandana. <laughs> It's okay, get it in. We got we got five more minutes. Okay, okay. I can make it look the way that yeah, I want it to. Do, if you want to just yeah, if you want to do the shadow of the shadow on her, I'm sure you could probably get it done. Okay, let's see. Right And then I'm gonna drop that color in. Okay, I think I'm getting happy with this. All right. And then what I'm gonna do is go to color burn in the layer properties and then I'm going to lower the opacity until I have a shadow that I like and I want to keep the shadow pretty light just mm -hmm. for the purposes of this piece um oh I also would like to give her lips a little bit of color um yes Okay, yeah, no, I don't want to do that. Okay, so. Adding some color. I like to make the top and bottom lips uh, different colors. Mm -hmm. um, and I usually like to make the top lip a darker color than the bottom lip. So. Yeah, it's usually done a lot stylistically because your top lip is usually catching shadow and then your bottom lip is catching the light. And so right. sometimes it's just, it's nice to just kind of do that two-tone. Yeah, and then and then she's cute and look at Very her cute. and I love her. Very content. Yeah. Um, if I have like a few more seconds, I also want to add. Yeah, you've, got, you've got about three minutes before we start cool. wrapping up. Cool. So. I want to add some color to this bracelet. Oh, wow, they got so tiny. Um, add some highlight here. And then um, put an overlay on that. Boop, boop. That's literally overlay. <laughs> and uh, lower that just a little bit. And then um, even on top of that, um, I want to add some highlights, but I just wanted them to have a different opacity than the ones on the earrings. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe even more on the pink side. Um, but I wanted to do some hair highlights. Taylor just wanted to say thank you. Love your style. And thanks again for, it says fun two lives, which I'm assuming means two live streams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> glad you lived two lives. <laughs> thank you, Taylor. <laughs> I'm glad that you came to both of them. Yes. Yeah, I appreciate appreciate everyone who came to these. This was really fun. This is my first time going live uh, with Adobe, and like I hope it's not my last because it was really really fun. Yeah, we it was a real joy having you here. Yeah. We, well, this is probably the least stressful one, and the I just everything was just like super fun. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah, 
This is a really good time. Tammy says, thanks for sharing. Yeah, I'm happy that uh, I got to to show show my art in a in a wider platform than I usually get to. Yeah, definitely. And that's, you know, and I think that's why Adobe Live is so cool and people get to come tune in from all over the world for free and check it out and kind of learn and I don't know. It's I guess really that it's cool. like you never you never know who's going to be next and who's going to show their work and and what kind of interesting things you might learn or you know new tricks i think that's yeah a big thing, right? like the, the new, new tricks, tricks like, oh, yes i never thought about it that way yeah those are valuable well if you can find Yay. a stopping point yeah this can, is it and okay this is it all right so let's let's do a quick recap of yes a day one and all the way to where we're at all right so day one we had our prompts the, they were uh originally covered up which you can see if i uh turn back on they were all covered up like that um we unveiled them uh one by one by the chat suggestion and we were drawing them in our prompt documents we got through a good chunk of them um i love a lot of these and i think i'll probably end up finalizing more than one of them um, i was gonna say you got own. some good ideas you got yeah some good ideas <laughs> uh and then uh, i put it in my instagram for a vote to see which one we would work on today and we chose the lesbian dinosaur tea party. Um, the lesbians are fairies. The dinosaurs are tiny. Uh, there are mushrooms in the background. Um, and and one of the dinosaurs is a chinosaur. And the other one is a tea, or no, the, the what? It has to be a T-Rex and the chinosaur at the same time. So, yes. They could both be chinosaurs. They can both be Chinosaurs. That yes. is true. That yes. is true. Yes. Um, and so this is what we got done today. I think we got pretty far. Yeah, I'm I agree. Impressed. I agree. Especially since it was mostly sketching the first day. So yes. Um, yeah. Well, I would say successful two days. Yeah. Um, it's great for me to be a part of this Adobe Live Pride Week and to have you, Noah Aspen, on here. Um, Again, uh, Instagram handle really quick for us, just so everybody hears it one more time. Yeah, that's aspen.aspirations. So check out Noah's work. Hopefully, if you didn't see all of the stream, go back, check out day one, follow along, and then day two, you can see where we got today. Um, as always, thank you so much for coming by. Uh, you can stick around for a Pride-themed week of creative challenges with Andrew Hockrattle, followed by how to build an e-commerce mobile app in XD with Brandon Gross. Thank you so much, for everybody, for coming by. I hope you guys enjoyed this Artist Spotlight. Hope you enjoyed Noah's art. Um, yeah, thank you so much. We'll see you yeah, again soon and stick you. around. There's more content to come. All right, bye, everyone. Bye.